Okay, everybody, this is the um, Estate Professionals Mastermind uh, Podcast Probate Mastery Role Play Call. I don't know what to call this, uh, but this is uh, this is role play. Um, it does end up going out onto YouTube, onto the uh, Probate Mastery YouTube channel. It also makes it into the Estate Professionals Mastermind Role Play session, or, or podcast. So we're going to call this the Estate Professionals Mastermind Podcast slash Probate Mastery Role Play session. And this is for uh, those of us in the real estate space who are prospecting our estate and our probate and our inherited property uh, uh, leads and want to sharpen uh, sharpen our skills and how we have that conversation. So um, if you've never been here before, this is a live. Um, we'd love for you to raise your hand and, uh, and volunteer getting put on the spot uh, to role play uh, or listen to those that uh, do let themselves get put on the spot. And we always, there's, none of us are perfect at this. So don't be worry, worried if you pop in and you're just not sure how to respond to something. Um, practically no one here that is going to play the role of the prospect of the heir that you're calling. Um, almost no one here is going to be aggressively hostile toward you. Um, our job as the prospect is to give you some um, delicate resistance to see and help you learn the skills of navigating around um, different resistance and in, in conversations, and also be able to pick up on little clues that they're leaving along the way. So we already have one hand up. Um, we've got Bernie's hand up. Bernie, I'm assuming that means that you are wanting to do uh, do some role play. Is that right? Yeah, that is correct. Right. Awesome. Well, let's go ahead and get this show on the road. Um, do I have someone that wants to play the uh, play the role of a prospect? Um, Bernie, I'm going to play the role of the prospect. Let's uh, go ahead and pin you. Don't start yet. I want to pin myself for the video. Um, I'm going to be the prospect. Let me get my notepad out. I'll take, take a few notes. And uh, let's get started. Start with a uh, start with a ring ring and I'll answer. Uh, can I do a knock knock? You can do a knock knock. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah, knock knock. Uh, hey, how how can I help you? Yeah, hi. My name is Bernie Stefan, and uh, I understand you've had a um, you've lost a loved one in in the recent uh, history here. Uh, is is that true? Uh, yeah. How do you how do you know that? Well, I, I got a record that tells me uh, that a um, uh, Mary Hill passed away. Uh, is is that was that your wife or your mom? It's my sister. Your sister. Oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. Uh, I Thanks. did want to come by and introduce myself because I help folks who are in one of these life transitions with uh, various services and resources that might be of help to you. Uh, how, how's it going with your folks? Uh, yeah, um, hadn't been the easiest thing in the world. Yeah, um, we, we didn't, imagine. we, we didn't know that she was going to pass it. It, she kept it, kept it secret. And we found out like two days before she was gone. Oh boy, that must be tough. Yeah. I, uh, I think it's been, a, a, a about a month ago that she passed. So you folks are dealing with that now. Is there anything that you find that you could use some help with? Uh, with regard to uh, what? Just, you know, uh, working what her wishes were. Maybe she left a will. Maybe it's a trust. Uh, maybe you're going to go into probate. Uh, those are all areas that I have some expertise in and uh, know how to hook you up with people that can help you. Uh, go through this process. Oh, um, yeah, no, I, I, I really can't think of anything that we need help with right now. Um, I'm pretty sure we're, we got it, we got it covered. Well, let me ask you, I, I, I'm glad that you have it covered right now. And uh, I, I'm going to send you some information. And if there's uh, anything uh, that comes up for you, uh, you can give me a call. Does that seem fair? Uh, yeah, that's okay. Good. 
well, uh, again, I'm really sorry for your loss. Uh, here's a brochure that uh, tells about the kind of services that I can offer. And like I said, uh, you'll be receiving a, a letter or two from me that points to additional information. Um, and so I, I wish you well, and uh, please don't hesitate to call. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Bye -bye. Okay. Thanks. Bye. All right. Uh, cool. Uh, who who has some feedback for Bernie? I thought that um, you did really well with that. I'm going to praise the conversational approach. Um, I took a few notes, but let me go to the audience first and see who uh, who wants to uh, who wants to chime in. If you want to chime in and give a little bit of feedback, praise, critique, raise your hand, please, and uh, and I'll call you up for your um, for your discussion and critique. Uh, Paul, let me go ahead and have you unmute yourself. Um, what do you have for Bernie? I thought it was uh, really good on the uh, tonality, the empathy. And he had a couple of hooks in there with regards to the things that he could provide with regards to service wow. uh, that would resonate well. Mm -hmm. Yep, a absolutely. I think that um, I think that uh, what you what you described is, is going to resonate really well. And the biggest thing, remember yesterday on the Tuesday coaching call, we said that your second key uh, key step in prospecting and building a relationship is being remembered. So the fact that you knocked on a door is going to make you remembered for sure. Um, good. Anybody else before I go into uh, what I wrote down? All right. If nobody else, um, Bernie, here's um, um, here's what I um, here's what I got. Uh, I like to kind of use what I call an elephant in the room approach. Um, there's a pretty big elephant in the room anytime somebody knocks on your door and they know personal things about you, or if they call you and they know personal things. And what what is that? What is that elephant in the room? Well, it's the how do I know about this? Yeah, yeah, okay. So um, a, a lot of times I kind of like to get that out of the way without them really vocalizing it. Okay. Um, once they've vocalized it, there you can easily get around it um, with the proper answer. And I thought that your your response and your answer was good. Um, it was it was almost almost exactly the way I would have answered. But I would I would prefer to address that elephant in the room before they bring it up. So. Mm -hmm. Hey, gosh, yeah, you know, I, I, I drove out here. Um, I have to forgive me. This, this is a little bit awkward. I, I just, I just not a big fan of, of calling strangers on the phone. Um, I noticed that you were in the middle of going through a probate process. You guys had petitioned and put this address down. Um, could, could I interrupt for a moment? I, yeah. I was seeing this as a pre-probate. A pre-probate. Get those lists. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Got it. Um, okay, that makes a little bit of a difference. Um, even there, okay, so if it's pre-probate, um, I'm still probably going to address maybe not how I got it, but but I'll set the conversation up in a way that it's less likely that they're going to say, how'd you get my information? Hey, listen, I, I'm not sure if you're the same person that um, recently um, was related to and recently lost Mary Smith. Um, do I have the wrong address or is that you? Okay. Now the way that I've done that is not likely to be um, less likely for them to say, how do you get my information? Because if they say, yeah, that's the right address. And look, I know a stranger popping up out of the blue. Um, it's always sort of weird, especially with this. Um, I don't like calling strangers randomly and bugging you on the phone. So I thought I'd stop by and drop some information off. Um, can I, can I take a real fast second, just real quick, tell you what I'm here for. And then, um, and then let you decide if you want to talk any further. Um, sure. Yeah. Make, make it fast. And of course, in person, they're more likely to be a little bit friendly, a little mm -hmm. bit, like you said yesterday, not, not everyone is super friendly, but they're more likely to be friendly in person. And that's where I would say I provide some resources and connection services that help, um, kind of navigate this process of settling an estate. Um, I don't know if that's going to be probate or if you guys have a trust or if you just haven't even really gotten there yet, but 
Um, I help with the process. Um, can I ask you a question, Bernie? Is is uh, this something that uh, you guys have, have looked into getting help with or is everything kind of under control at this point? Yeah, I think we've got it handled. Ah, oh, great. Um, I love it. I'll tell you what, um, let me, and you said, I'm going to send you some information. Um, that felt a little weird to me, even though I recognize that you are going to send some information. Um, it felt strange. And I think it would have felt strange to the person that's standing at the door. Cause you're right here. What do you mean? You're going to send me some information. So, Hey, I'm going to leave you with a little bit of information on the services, the resources I provide. Um, and then I might send you, I might, if, if it's okay, I might drop something in the mail that goes into a little bit more detail. Um, can I leave you a brochure? Sure. Okay. And now, and now they're, now you can address sending it to them without it feeling weird because why do you need to send me something when we're right here? Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I like the idea even that I was just handing him my brochure, but can I hand you a brochure that explains the kind of resources and help I can provide. Yep. And yep. it's nothing about mailing because I'm going to for send them a thank you card, a postcard. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, I may, if I'm knocking on doors, I may go prepared with a little bit more than a brochure. I might go prepared with a package that has... Um, checklist. A checklist that has a, um, a vendor flyer that has potentially a seller option sheet, things like that. I might um, I might just go pre-prepared with some of that, especially the stuff that doesn't need to be customized to the person. Mm -hmm. But good. Great job, man. Great job. I appreciate it. Well, I appreciate your feedback. It's uh, I, I appreciate it a lot. It, it makes sense. Thanks, Bernie. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, real quick, Ron, were you going to um, role play or were you giving feedback for Bernie? Feedback. Feedback. Okay, let uh, me call you up first. Hold on one second. There was, uh, Go for it. Um, yeah, if I got a question on, you said you want to bring a packet to the, if he's hang, uh, door knocking, bring it a packet with a checklist and things. I'm not sure if I would do that because how am I going to get their email for further communication if I give them all the information at the door? Sure. Yep. Um, I get that. I get that. Uh, for me, um, at the door um, is shooting for an email when I already got to the door and I made that um, for me. And I'm not saying for you or anyone else. That's probably a little less important than it would have been in the beginning. Um, my mission is to be remembered. And if they already met me face to face and I gave them something and, and I know that they have it in their hands and I know that I'm going to be mailing them, it's not vital uh, for me to get the email. I don't want you guys hearing that. Sometimes I'm going to say, uh, don't worry about that. Don't worry about the email. That's not what I'm saying here. I'm just saying for me. Um, you what I might do is is say, I'm going to give you some information, and then I've got a few other things um, that I don't have with me. Can I email those to you? Okay. So you could always fall back to the back to the email if you want. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And I'm not proposing giving everything. I'm proposing giving a few things, um, ideally in some kind of a packet. Uh, anything that's loose in their hands has a significantly higher likelihood of getting thrown away than something that's in a package. Uh, people don't often throw away something that feels official. Um, they will frequently throw something away that feels like a piece of marketing. Well, if yeah, you put a bunch good. of marketing yeah. pieces inside of an official package, they're less likely to throw the package away they're likely to kind of hold on to it. And, and uh, that's another thing, Bernie, that I would say is you want to, you want to say, Hey, listen, I know that, that you probably don't need anything. Um, all I would ask is that you hold on to this because you're probably going to run into a few things. Um, and there's good connections and contacts and services on there. As you run into those, um, look in the package and see if there's already a service or a, or something in there that, uh, that you need. And then that way you're kind of plugging in their head that they should hold on. 
Good. Thank you. All right. Um, awesome. Thanks, Ron. Appreciate the uh, input. Uh, let me pull Cam up. Um, and then um, we'll go to Mikkel and then Michael. Uh, Cam. Hey, what's up, Bruce? Play? How you doing, buddy? Good, man. How are you? I woke up this morning, no right to complain. And even if I did, who's going to listen, right? Nobody. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so, yeah, if you could, um, I've been working on... I mean, I've been working a lot on my language, reading a lot of your um, positive conversation hooks and stuff like that. So I want to practice a little more on that. But um, right. if you could objectify, I mean, be a little rough on me, but if you could objectify and then let me in later, just so I could practice, um, I want to mm -hmm. get through the um, the attorney, you know, the attorney objection. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Great. I love it. <clears throat> All right. <throat> Hit me. Ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? Can I speak to Bruce, please? Speaking. Hello, how are you doing? It's Cameron. How are you doing today? Uh, Cameron, um, fine. Yep. Uh, how can I help you? So a little bit about me. I'm a probate specialist in the local area. Um, I help families, guide them, navigate them through the probate process. Didn't know if you had a couple minutes just to see how I can help. Help with probate? So I know you're currently a personal representative to 123 Main Street. I know it's a super tough time. Uh, my condolences, by the way. Um, I, I like to take care of the headaches, you know. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm not a real estate agent. I'm not a attorney, but I do work with a reputable attorney. I handle kind of the grunt work. Um, could you tell me a little bit about what you're going through, the process, and how I uh, possibly could help? I really um, don't need anything because my attorney is is taking care of the whole process for me. Okay, that's super awesome, actually. So, um, you know, that actually makes my job a little easier. So, like I said, I'm not an attorney, but I do work with one. I handle kind of the grunt work, I want to say. Um, so what the attorney does, they handle usually about 20 to 50 percent of the work, you know, the legal legalities of everything. I handle mostly the estate preservation, you know, cleanups, cleanouts, the moving, all that fun stuff. <clears throat> um, that's kind of what I what I handle. Um, quick question: Did you guys get your letters yet, or anything like that? Letters. Yep, your letters of testamentary. Um, just saying that you are allowed to sell the property. Um, I I don't re I don't recognize that. Um, I'm not sure what that is. Saying I'm allowed to sell the property. Well, they just give. I'm you not the... sure we're going to sell the property. We we haven't even talked about that yet. Oh, understandable. Um, that's kind of where I come in just to help you figure out the the tough parts of things. Um, not saying you do want to sell the property or anything. Just giving you an idea of what you might be looking at. Um, couple more questions. I didn't know if you had a couple extra seconds. Um, yeah, I've, I've got someone coming into the office here in a couple of minutes, but just, just a minute. Okay. That's perfectly fine. So like I said, um, handle the grunt work. Um, I, you know, do the things that the attorneys usually don't want to do. Um, are you available to possibly have me look at the property just to see if, you know, you're available to, I don't think we're going to need that right now. Like I said, we, we, we haven't um had any discussions um attorneys doing almost everything um uh, you maybe check back in a couple of months and see okay and would it be cool if i um grabbed your email address just to see if i could uh, send you some of the information that i have on my business email my business mm -hmm. website um i can take it down i can take your your website and email down um but i i, I really don't give my email out understandable um it's Cameron at yahoo.com. Okay. My business website is myprobateservice.com. Um, so is it you yourself or is it, do you have more than one sibling? Like, how's that work for you guys? Um, yeah, what, what uh, it, it's my family. What, why, why, why do you ask? I'm only asking just because, um, you know, you might, 
I'm only asking because I want to, I would like to help possibly. So I didn't know if you had more than one opinion on the matter. Um, you know, maybe we could all sit down and speak. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, so like I mentioned earlier, I can reach out to you. It's going to be a couple of months before we really decide anything or know, know a whole lot about what's going on. Um, this kind of came out of the blue. So um, I'm not expecting it. And we're going to take a little bit of time and heal up and kind of grieve as a family before looking for anything. Totally understandable. And I'm sorry for the random call. Um, like I said, I just like to reach out. I've been through the process myself and, you know, I like to help families. I try to come from it from more of like a helper's perspective. That's mm -hmm. why I got the random call, but, um, totally understandable. If it's possible, maybe I could just follow up in like a month. Um, and we can go from there. Um, yeah, give me a couple of months. Okay. That's fine. Um, have your information and, um, I'll bother you later. Have a great day. Okay. All right. Thanks. You too. I feel like I rushed that a lot, but, uh, no, I, I mean, I don't know. I want everyone to know that we move conversations along a little faster through role play than a real live conversation. Many times, sometimes a real conversation goes fast. They're just like, you've got to keep it moving along and following your formula. Other times, um, it just flows. You get someone that's talkative and overshares and things like that. And um, and and so while I don't think that you were rushing it for this setting, um, it, it might have been rushed compared to the average dialogue conversation that you have with someone. Uh, but remember, our job is to test for boundaries, mm -hmm. um, explore boundaries, and then don't cross the boundary. So if you get off of the call without them telling you what's too far, um, then you haven't asked enough. Okay, so I want them saying, no, don't, I don't give my email. I want them saying, no, I don't need help. I want them saying, we don't know yet. I want to hear those things. Why? Um, it's not necessarily that those are the specific answers that I want to hear. Um, but I want to, I want to find their boundary. If I don't find their boundary, then I'm going to have no idea where it is. I'm going to ha have no idea what sort of structure to operate inside of on that relationship. Understood. Okay, so I want you asking those questions that figure out if they're going to sell, that figure out who is involved, that figure out if you can get an email. Ask those questions. But once you've gotten a no, once they've said, hey, that's a boundary, and they're not going to verbally say it, <laughs> there's a boundary there. Don't go back to that boundary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Move on to it. Just move on. Yep. Just move on. So um, I threw up a number of boundaries. As a matter of fact, I think that you touched those same boundaries a few times. And how do you know if you've touched that boundary again? Mm -hmm. You hear the words, like I said, like I said, that's when you know that you've, uh, that, that they've previously put up a boundary that maybe you just didn't pick up on before. All right. So I want to try to move around. You get the boundary and then you move around. So um, let me start with four different things. So number one, your condolences. I didn't feel it. Mm. I didn't feel the empathy. All right. I want you to put your actor's hat on a little bit. And I'm not saying have fake empathy. You need to have real empathy, but you need to learn how to have real empathy. Empathy is not something that comes very natural to most of us. Um, dealing with loss doesn't come natural to most of us. Um, Thank you. Friends of mine have I've lost uh, have have lost loved ones or dogs or pets or whatever, and I haven't necessarily known what to do. Thanks. Sorry, Cam. I you accidentally too. muted you. Um, one second, Cam. Unmute yourself accidentally muted you. I was trying to mute somebody else. Um, so I haven't known exactly what um, what to do. And so I'm the person that's guilty of not calling. <laughs> and then a year later, be like, hey, you know, I meant to call. I didn't know what to say. Um, because it's it's so unnatural to us to deal with someone in grief, we don't necessarily know the appropriate way to act and I want you to learn the appropriate way to act when you're expressing condolences. So number one, you've got to lower your tone. 
You've got to slow your speech down. And then when you come out of it, you don't come out of it. You don't go, hey, so basically I help with all the grunt work. It sounds like you lost someone uh, important to you. And they go, yeah, it was a bl completely blindsided. We're devastated. You don't go, oh, man, I'm I'm so sorry to hear that. Well, anyway, let me tell you what I was calling for. You, you don't come right out of it. You have to dip into the emotion of uh, the empathy. And then instead of popping right back out of it like a psychopath, you slowly climb out of it. Okay, so it's, hey, you know, I, I know that this is, probably really tough time you know if if you don't mind let me take a real brief second and maybe share a little bit of um of the services that i offered you, do you think that might be okay so you hear my at, all the way through that i'm climbing my tonality and my pace of speech out of the um of the emotion this is the type of thing that I almost really hate to teach because this these calls get get public. And I don't want someone, <laughs> I don't want the wrong people hearing me teach you how to influence a conversation like this, but you need to know how to influence a conversation like this. You need to know how to really um, dip into that empathy and not use it to manipulate, but use it to influence. Um, and, and when you influence, as long as you're influencing toward things that they need and not toward things that they don't need, then I'm good. So if you have ethics, I'm okay teaching you these techniques and you do Cam. This goes for everybody else. I'm good teaching you techniques like this. If you have ethics, if you don't have ethics, don't use them. All right. Not, if you don't have ethics, you're not going to listen to what I just said anyway. All right, cool. Um, next thing, Cam, um, grunt work. I might find a different expression for what you do. Um, I would think that you're just a property clean out specialist. I, I wouldn't necessarily come to a grunt worker to sell my house to. So I would find a different, um, a different way to express what you do other than grunt work. Um, do you know what I mean when I give you value when I say to you give value or offer value before payment. Yeah. Like show what you can do before you ask for some type of money or ask for some type of like give before you get. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that goes to really granular, small things as well. Um, some things that we can ask them for as compensation are, Money, payment for services, um, appointments, mm -hmm. a permission to follow up, email addresses, contact information with other family members. All of those things are forms of payment that they can provide us. Um, I never want to ask someone for a form of payment without getting them to agree to something first. Mm -hmm. So you asked for an email. You said, hey, is it okay if I get your email and send you some information? Mm -hmm. Okay. You put the payment before the value. So I want you to put the value before the payment. Hey, I completely understand you guys aren't ready. Tell you what, why don't I send you some information on, on what I do and the resources? And then that way you can give me a call. You have that and you can call me if anything comes up. Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. So now they've agreed to your resources, your information. Now you tell them how much it costs. Perfect, what's the best email? So don't say, hey, would you give me $50 for information I send? Okay, say, would you like this information? Yes, I'd like the information. It's only $50. And I know an email is not the equivalent of 50 bucks, but I'm saying, don't don't shove the email into the front of the conversation. They're going to say no, just like I did. Get them to agree to the information, you sending the information, and then tell them, perfect, it's only going to cost you an email address. And you don't you don't say it like that, but that's that's essential. I'm offering you candy. And you yeah. Take it. yeah, you want the candy? Yeah, give me your email address. Okay. Okay. Um, and that's all I'm going to leave you with. There's a couple of other things, but I'm not, it just gets overwhelming. Work on those three things first, dipping into and slowly climbing out of empathy, um, 
find something other than grunt work um, and then work on if you're going to ask them for an email, contact information, family members' names, appointments, um, compensation for services, any of those things, get their agreement to um, to something first and then tell them what the cost is. Can you give me the last one or the last two real quick? I mean, it's, I, I can. Yeah, um, it's really empathic statements. So you asked questions that crossed some boundaries of mine. Um, and I think you should have earlier in the call recognized that I was putting up some pretty strict walls and boundaries around, around what I was willing to share and not willing to share. Anytime someone's putting hard walls up, I generally don't push into a load of questions. Normally, if they're throwing, um, throwing their walls up, uh, I will shift from question asking to statement making. Hmm. Okay, people that don't want to answer questions from a stranger um, are more likely to correct incorrect assumptions than they are to answer questions. So what I might have said is, hey, I imagine you have some siblings that are helping, right? No, I don't have any siblings. It's me and my kids. Okay, they're, they're, a lot of times they'll correct you. Uh, versus answer questions. So turn those questions into more of a guess about their situation. It's called an empathic statement. Mm -hmm. Turn the turn it into a guess about their situation and see if they affirm or correct you. Um, those, especially with the person that doesn't want to be answering questions, a lot of times they'll answer a thousand questions if they don't know that it's a question. And sometimes you can use that with uh, drivers like direct people. Because they mm -hmm. like to correct people a lot. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Yep. All right. That's all I had. Thank you. I appreciate yep. you. Anybody Thanks. else want to tell you, boy? Uh, let's. Uh, so, Mikhail, let me bring you up. I think you wanted to role play. If you had feedback, start with feedback, and then we'll move to role play. Yeah. Uh, good to be here, Bruce. I would love to role play. Uh, Cam, I would just say when I'm on the phone, uh, I, I don't have time to ask questions. If I asked as many questions as you did, I would have gotten hung up. So maybe just streamline it a little bit more, but it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Awesome. Cool. All right. Um, do I have anyone that wants to come up and uh, play the prospect for Mikkel? Anybody? Uh, I see some hands, So, um, but, but you guys had your hands up earlier. I'll play the prospect again. All right, go for it. Uh, I think I have the right number. Bruce? Yeah. Okay. Who's this? Yeah. So my name's Mikel, and I'm calling because we see that you're going through probate in Lee County. And we call every family that goes through this because, well, we can take care of anything that you may not want to do or don't have time for. So we're just kind of checking in to see if there's anything you'd like to get off your plate or if you got it all handled. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure that you have the right the right number you're looking for you you mentioned probate yeah it's yeah. about is this about my my aunt's estate yeah so we went to the county clerk and it says that you're representing the estate for your aunt so we're just calling to check okay yeah Got it. Um, no, I mean, we're, we're, um, we're, we're really in pretty good shape. I don't think that we, um, I don't think we need anything right now. Well, well, that's great. It sounds like you don't really looking for any help today. Yeah, no, we're, we're in good shape. Okay. I do appreciate the call though. All right. Well, I'll let you go, Bruce, but, uh, oh, just one thing. As you start to wrap up this probate, is there a house that you're leaning towards keeping or you may be leaning towards selling? No idea yet. No idea? No. All right. Yeah, that's fine. We find that with a lot of families. Um, most people don't really know what's going on. But with these storms coming in Florida, there's just one thing I'd like to ask before I let you go just to make you secure. Um, is the house empty by any chance as in no one's been living there for the past 30 days? Why do you want to know? So... When a house is empty for 30 days, what most people don't know is that 90% of insurance companies will not write a check if the next hurricane comes by and blows it down. 
So we like to make sure that everybody gets vacant property insurance. And by the way, this doesn't cost me a dime. We have an insurance adjuster on our team, but we just like to make sure that your home is protected if it is. So is the house empty or do you have someone living in there? I'm pretty sure my insurance covers vacant properties, but I can check. Um, no, nobody's nobody's living there. I go and check on it every day, though. Hello? Okay, so you you didn't have you didn't ask specifically for a vacant property just to make sure. No, I've never heard of that before. Okay, well, I'm gonna I'm just gonna tell you now. We see this a lot your home is most likely not covered. Would it be all right if I had my insurance guy call you in the next hour just to make sure that everything's all right? Because if a storm does come, it's very likely they will not write a check for you. Um, What's his information? I can call him. Yeah, that's fine. So his name is Tyler. Do you have a pen? Yeah. His name's Tyler Nagel. Okay. His number is 239-123. Four, five, six, seven. Okay. All right. Well, Got Bruce, it. just wanted to make sure that was good. You have a great rest of your day. All right. Yeah, you too. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Cool. Um, very last thing that you did. Um, value before payment. Same thing that we just talked about with Cam. Okay. Um, so... I want to baby step into somebody bothering them. Can I have my insurance adjuster call you in the next hour? Um, to me, that's pretty high pressure. Don't get me wrong. High pressure really, really works on some people. There are other people, most people are absolutely going to shut you down. Okay. Can I have my insurance adjuster call you in the next hour? Um, a lot of people are going to shut you down on that. So um, I would rather um, ease into that, kind of show a little bit of value. Hey, listen, um, if it's if it's all right with you, check with your insurance cool. agent. Um, make sure that you are covered. If it's okay with you, I'd like to potentially connect you with my insurance adjuster, my, my insurance agent. Um, so that you guys can talk just in case you're not currently covered. Is that okay? Yeah, perfect. Um, can I have can I have him? Can I do that in email or can I do that? Can I send you? I'm uh, or I'm going to send you a text connection so that you have his information. Or I'm going to send you a group email so you have his information. What's your best email? So I'm gonna kind of lean into it and get some agreement to some value. I want you to, I want to connect you with my insurance agent just in case you're not covered so that you have someone that you can call. And then, uh, yes, I agree with that. And then kind of tell them what the next step is going to be. Tell them what the payment is for that email connection, text connection, something like that. Okay. Um, I only wrote two other things down besides value before payment. I want to see if anyone else has those two other things. So if you guys are in here and you want to um, you want to chime in, share your thoughts, critique, praise, feedback for uh, Mikkel, pop your hand up. Um, if one of my guys with your hand up already wants to um, share some feedback, uh, please, um, you guys just unmute yourself. Sarah, your hand just went up. Um, did you have some feedback or were you here for role play? Yeah. Yeah. Uh... The, the feedback I would give is before you go into your spiel, ask for permission to even talk. Mm -hmm. um, I I it I feel like I mean I I'm not the best at it, but it it definitely lowers resistance and people appreciate it more. And if you think about the phone calls that you get when people just get into the spiel. I don't know about you, but I generally just hang up. Yeah. I'm um, done. Yeah. I'm uh, done. How do you guys um ask for permission? Because when I do it in the beginning of the call, it sounds a little cheesy. Yeah, like, it sounds oh, cheesy. Do you have a few minutes? I, I can't. I'm not... Yeah, if until you're used to it. I mean, like, Mikkel? Yeah. Mikkel, this is Sarah. Look, don't hate me. I'm a realtor. But before you hang up, I was, I was just hoping you could help me out with something real quick. Would that be okay? Yeah. There's anything. Yeah. A pattern interrupt that I find in a ask for permission in in some way to even have the conversation. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank I you. love it. Uh, and that's, uh, that's, that's great. The way that I, I ask for permission would be, Hey, so this, this is, this is actually about the estate that you're managing right now. Um, I, I, um, got to work closely with the court clerk, um, to identify some people that are going through the probate process. Uh, listen, totally out of the blue, Mikkel, um, you think I could take just like a fast second and, uh, tell you what I was really calling for? Okay. Are you, are you going to say no to that? If you're the prospector, you're going to say no. Probably not, Bruce. Probably not. Okay. Uh, now, if it sounds cheesy, that's an indication that you just need to practice. Okay. There's a couple of things there that I thought you needed to practice. Um, your, ah, just one thing. Yeah. You good. said just one thing twice. I love the just one thing approach, but it can't be transparent. All right. You can't sound like Columbo. Do be Columbo. Don't <laughs> sound like Columbo. Okay. Um, so you gotta, you gotta disguise it, soften it up a little bit. So, Hey, um, I, I Mikkel, I really appreciate the time today. Just before I jump off the phone, can I ask you, are you guys, and just kind of get into it and, and your, Hey, just before I jump off the phone is the equivalent of saying, Hey, just one more thing. But it doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like I'm about to give you a gotcha. Like each each of the two times that you said one more thing, I was like, oh boy, here's here comes the gotcha moment. It felt like that was the it felt like that was the trap that you'd been setting up for me. So set the trap. Just don't make it as transparent. Okay. Um and uh, and you said I went to the county clerk. Um, I, in the very beginning of the call, I went to the county clerk. Um, I never want to say things like I I went and pulled probate records, or I went to the clerk, or you're on a list, or I got records, or I have my sources, things like that. So normally, what I'm gonna do is say, "Hey, uh, it's a really good question." Um, I, I work really closely with the clerk's office to identify um, families that need resources going through probate. So I work closely with the clerk's office. Okay. Um, and that that'll probably get you get you around that um, sort of objection thrown at you right away. Cool. All okay. right. Um, Thank you. Let me go ahead and grab um, Michael White. Come on up, Michael and Sarah. Pop your hand back up so I don't forget to call you up in, again in a minute. I I don't. I'm okay. Oh you oh you 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 only had feedback. Okay. Uh, where did Michael White go? Yeah, I'm right here, Bruce. All right. So is Bernie still in the, the room? I don't know. Bernie, if you're here, pop your hand up. Whenever I pin um, speakers, I can't see the uh, I can't see everyone in the room. So I have to see your hand go up. Bernie, if you're here, um, throw your hand up. If not, uh, go ahead and give him some feedback anyway. Now, I want to I want to do the door knocking um, uh, 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 role play. I want to try door knocking Bernie. If he's still oh, here. Okay. Okay. I don't see Bernie in the room. All right. That's fine. You'll do. You know how to do it. You know how to be a prospect. So. Yeah, absolutely. All right. All right. You ready? I'm ready. Knock, knock. Uh, Hey. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. So you're probably wondering what a complete stranger is doing standing in your front yard or in front of your door and knows your front, uh, your name and uh, sort of bothering you uh, on, a, on a beautiful afternoon like today. I, I, I wasn't, but I am now. Yeah. So my name is Michael and I'm a probate specialist here in the local area. And I noticed that uh, you're happy to be the executor of an estate. Okay. Yeah, it's now a bad time to talk. I got a minute. Great. So, Bruce, um, as a probate spe specialist, um, my goal is to try to take some of the anxiety and stress out of the probate process. And uh, we I work a lot with uh, people like yourself that are in the process. And, you know, and our, and our goal is to let you focus on the family 
uh, as soon as possible. And so you can get back to a normal life. You know, what, what's your biggest frustration so far uh, being the executor of a probate? Well, I've just never done it before. So uh, I feel like, uh, I feel like I don't know what I don't know. Yeah. It can be very confusing. A uh, little bit. Yeah. Never, I've just never done it before. So I, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure of the process that I need to go through. Yeah. So what's the biggest thing right now that's uh, being sort of confusing to you? What's what aspect of it? What's the one thing that's really seems to be real confusing to you right now? I, 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 I it's, it's mostly that I don't know what I don't know. Like I, I don't know what I'm supposed to be confused um, with at the moment. Right. Um, it's like, I, I it, it's mostly that I'm just not sure the next step that I'm supposed to take. Yeah. You sound like you're completely lost about the whole process and, what what step a step b and step c uh yeah yeah what kind of guidance would you like what what kind of help what kind of guidance would you like someone to provide to you to sort of help you get started i mean if you could just tell me what i'm supposed to be doing next uh that that'd be cool with me oh that's that'd be great yeah so uh, you know um it sounds like you haven't even spoken to an attorney or you haven't received any kind of legal advice or anything like that no we really don't have the money for that so we were kind of trying to use just like Google to right. um, to figure it out. Yeah, that's got to be really tough trying to Google, you know, instructions and just trying to piece it all together, you know, one piece at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it can be difficult. I mean, so uh, it sounds like you really need someone to, to come in and sort of hold your hand and, um, you know, sort of get you started on the right path. Uh, yeah. 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 What, what kind of paper? Is that what you, you do? Yeah, actually we do. You know, uh, are you, are you supposed to be giving you an example of uh, what, what, how we've helped some people before? Sure. Yeah. Go for it. So recently I had a client just like you, they had no clue where to start. We were able to come in, sort of sit down, help them get the documents organized, made sure that, um, you know, the insurance companies were contacted and make sure that uh, death certificates were sent out to the right uh, agencies and sort of got the the process rolling for them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is, that's kind of like something that might yeah. be of interest how much, to you. How much? Uh, how much? How much does this cost? Yeah, you're probably thinking it's going to be like a million dollars, don't you? Well, I don't even have a hundred dollars, so yeah. I wasn't thinking a million. I, I but I I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm just clueless. Yeah, it sounds like money's sort of tight for your family, and that you yeah. really can't afford. Yeah. to do much mm -hmm. yeah yeah you know don't, don't worry about the money right now bruce it sounds like you there's you know there's things you need to worry about before for money and, and that's sort of getting things rolling so you can try to get your life back in, in in place um are you opposed to me scheduling a time with you to to come back in and we can sit down and more and talk more detail about exactly what you need and um how we can for, sort of get a plan together to uh get you started get the process started for you um, my wife's going to be here in like 30 minutes. You want to do it this afternoon? Yeah. So it sounds like, uh, this afternoon, uh, at, uh, three o'clock, I guess that's 30 minutes from now. I mean, that, that would work. Sure. Yeah. Well, great. Yeah. So, uh, three o'clock this afternoon or 30 minutes from now, uh, you and your wife will be here and we can, we can sit down and, and figure it out. Sure. Yeah. Great. All right. Great, Bruce. We'll see you in 30 minutes then. Thanks a lot. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Yeah. Not right. exactly how I wanted to do it, but, you know. <laughs> how do you want to do it? Well, you know, I wanted to start out going saying, listen, uh, Bruce, you know, I'm not here to uh, get you to change your religion, sell your house, or even change uh, wireless cell plans. Um, you know, is it a, is it a bad, is, is now a bad time to talk? Or I was going to try to open up with something a little bit more funnier to try mm -hmm. to get you to talk a little bit, a little bit more engagement. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, the um interesting interesting thing with uh door knocking and calling is um uh, people present all kinds of uh all kinds of paths and sometimes they're rocky and they require that and other times they're like oh my gosh i got to i got to change strategies midstream i thought you did a great job changing the strategy great job yeah it you know door knocking is definitely not uh one avenue i would approach but you know hey yeah 
I thought it was good. Plan. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got, uh, you got the appointment. You um, got me to say I was confused. So good job. All right. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I actually got kind of lost in role playing there. I did not take any notes. I, I thought, I thought it was good. All right. Cool. Michael. Thanks, man. Um, let me go to Nate. Real, um, real gonna... quick. Michael's the man. He, he helped me a lot. Uh, cold calling and stuff like that. He, he's come to my uh, events as well. So thank you, Michael. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. All right. Cool. Um, Nate. How's it going? It's going good, man. What's happening? Not much, not much. So I'll be, I'll be completely honest. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've done a lot of, a lot of cold calling for wholesaling. Yeah. Not one time have I cold called a, a person in probate. So, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, this, this is going to be, this is going to be fun. Um, before, you know, it's like the practice before, uh, the big game. So, yeah, I love it. I'll tell you, um, uh, probate, um, yeah, there's going to be the people that are a little, are very difficult, but, um, all in all, uh, probate are some of the easier calls. If you're used to cold calling other leads, probate are actually very easy calls. Uh, the, the average person is going to be easier. Yeah. Um, That's good to know. <laughs> might be harder. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, all right. Uh, so go. yeah, I'm just going to role play on, on a cold call. So. Okay. Sounds good. Sweet. Okay. Uh, ring, ring, ring. Uh, hello, it's Bruce. Hey Bruce, how you doing? My name's Nate. Uh, sorry, I, I know I know my my call might be a little uh, unexpected. Uh, I wasn't even sure if I had the right number. Um, but I was calling because I understand that there was a passing of a loved one, uh, Jim Smith, recently. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, who, well, gave, who gave you my my number? Well, so first of all, let me let me offer my condolences. Um, I know death is not an easy thing to go through. I'm actually going through that right now with my stepfather. He's going through uh, the estate's going through prob probate as well. Um, so yeah. uh, I want to offer my condolences. Uh, so I, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I was calling because I work closely with a lot of families going through uh, probate here in Douglas County. And like I said, I know this is kind of out of the blue. Um, it might not even be relevant, but um do you have a quick minute for me to tell you what I was calling about? Uh, I got some family coming in here in a few minutes. Um, uh, go for it. Um, I might have to cut you off here in a, in a second though. Gotcha. No worries. It won't take long. Uh, you know, so, uh, Bruce, I provide a turnkey service that helps with, uh, the probate process here in Douglas County. And, uh, as a part of my approach, um, I deal directly with the probate clerk every month to identify families that might be going through probate for the first time. Um, I basically, I help handle any tasks that you might not have time or the desire, uh, to deal with. Um, Bruce, can I ask you something? And you may not even know right now, but do you know who will be handling the estate for Jim Smith? Um, probably myself and my sister, but we're, uh, we, we haven't even, um, gotten approval from the court yet. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Well, good. Uh, that shaved off a couple minutes of, uh, of us needing to talk. Cause uh, I know you're, I know you're in a rush. So have you guys ever dealt with probate before? Um, or is this the first time that you've ever handled something like this? Uh, yeah, no, I've never been through it before. Okay. Gotcha. Um, do you, do you have a timeline? Um, well, so first things first, have you already petitioned to file for the probate? Uh, what's that mean? Uh, so essentially you have to uh, petition the court um, to start the probate process so that you guys can start um, settling the assets and settling the estate. You mean like the application or what? Um, we've applied. We've been, we've been to the courthouse and... Um, filled our application out. I think that's what you're talking about. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Um, well, you know, I know, you know, some people, they like to move fast and get this, uh, off of their plate and others, um, it takes some time to process, but, uh, you know, we, we can be there whenever, you know, whenever you're ready. So, um, so first, you know, I just, I don't want to bore you with, uh, too much out of this, but, um, is there, is there any, Sorry, I, I lost my I lost my train of thought there. Um, You're good. Yeah. You're good. <laughs> uh oh, so you did say that your sister um she's gonna be a co-executor. Is is that is that right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, maybe I, I, I just don't know. We don't, we've never been through this, so I don't know how many people are supposed to be involved or if it's just me or just her, or there's like eight of us. Um, I, I don't, I just don't know at this point. Okay. No, I understand. Um, is everybody involved? Are they all on the same page? Are they all, uh, you know, on good terms? Yeah, we've got a pretty good relationship. Good. Okay. I, I know sometimes that's not the case and that makes it a little bit harder for the family. So, mm -hmm. um, that's, that's definitely a good thing. Okay. Um, I know, I know that this may be, you know, I just trying to figure out some of the things that I might be able to help you with. Um, do you, do you know, is there going to be any real estate that's involved in, in, uh, settling the estate? Um, actually the real estate is all in trust. And, um, so we, we don't gotcha. have to go through probate with that. Gotcha. Okay. And are, are you guys planning on keeping that or what do you guys have planned for that? Um, probably one of them we're going to keep as a rental. We've got a uh, property at the beach and we have one here in, in town that we'll probably end up selling. Um, we're, gotcha. um, we really haven't had the discussions to figure out the feasibility of, of either of those yet. Mm hmm like when uh, or how much or anything like that, but we'll probably end up selling either. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Is that something that, uh, are you guys thinking that you're, you'll want to list it or, you know, take the time to list it, or are you guys probably going to look at, uh, you know, trying to get it off your hands kind of quickly? Um, well, the house at the beach is absolutely going to be better to, to list it. We probably even use our old realtor that, that sold us the house. Um, cause that was like five years ago when it was a family purchase that was put into the trust. Um, but here, uh, the one here in town, it's, uh, it's a little bit more beat up. Um, I just am not sure what we're going to do with it yet. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. And you said, so, well, I mean, that's some good information. Um, how many, how many bedrooms and bathrooms is it for the one that's in town? Um, Oh no, uh, four bedrooms, uh, two baths, it might be two and a half. Um, I really haven't been there a whole lot because, uh, right. dad kept it as rental. Okay. And, um, and so I don't, um, it's been like five or six years since I even went in there. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and ha have you guys kind of talked about what you guys were kind of look to need to get out of the property? Nah, nothing yet. Not yet. Okay. Yeah. I, listen, um, I, I appreciate the call. Um, I got some family that just walked in the door, so I'm going to have to button it up. Hey, yeah, I completely understand. And uh, like I said, since, you know, you've already given me a good amount of your time, which, you know, I truly appreciate, Bruce. Uh, I can email you some more information about what we can help with to make this a little bit easier for you and your family. Um, you can read it over, pick and choose, you know, what you may want, want help with. Mm -hmm. Then reach out to me uh, when the time sounds right. Um, is that good? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Perfect. What's a, what's a good email address for you? Uh, Bruce at gmail.com. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Well, Bruce, it was great talking to you. Um, again, condolences to you and your family. Um, and just let me know where I can fit in and help be uh, that piece of that puzzle. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thanks Bruce. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye. Uh, cool. Awesome. All right. Real quick. Um, you, saved you presented the i'll email you information in the right way generally as soon as you said i'll email you information or i can email you information i went value before payment get the i'll send you some information is that okay yes what's your best email so uh, but but the way that you saved it was uh, by pinning on that way you can call me if you need any help i always do that always and that that that'll that'll pretty much so essentially you're saying i'll i'll send you this information so that or because i want you to have control in, in our communication in the future absolutely yep. now everyone here that's like hey but i want to be in charge of following up with them you are going to be in charge of following up with them they just don't need that red flag in the conversation so you're you're a thousand percent gonna call them back they just don't need to know it right now right it needs to feel like, oh yeah, I have control. Uh, good. Um, um, so reach out to me. That was awesome. Um, I would, uh, only in terms of petitioning the court, um, I would look to, uh, making that, put that more in layman's terms. Okay. 
uh, I grew up in a, uh, a preacher's pastor's house and in, um, in, in growing up in a religious house with, with a pastor, everybody, we like Christians and in, in that environment, and especially if they're in some kind of ministry, they talk at this level and use these terms that people don't understand. And we'd always say, uh, it can't, it can't, um, uh, be, uh, too churchy. Your language can't be too churchy because people don't understand what it is. And then I got in real estate and we've got to strip out the realtorese out of the conversation. Um, and like anything that I'm infatuated with, um, it, it usually we end up having our own lingo and people don't understand that stuff. Sure. So they don't really know what petition is. Um, I would just say, if you, you guys already applied, has the court, is the judge given you approval? I would just kind of pull out and put, put it in more layman's terms for them. Okay. Yep. Um, great call. Great call. I loved it. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bl bring uh, Vladimir up. We are a little over time, guys. Uh, Vladimir is going to be our last role player. Um, come on up. All right. Go All right. Sounds good. You hear me okay? Yeah, for sure. All right. Ring, uh, ring. Hello. Bruce. Uh, yes, yeah, speaking. Yeah, Bruce, uh, my name is Vladimir, and it's probably unexpected. I got your number from the public record, and I help people who are in probate situation um, and help them to take care of the property. Do, do you mind a couple of questions? Um, about probate? Yep. Um, yeah, maybe what... what 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 what's up yeah I, I don't want to take a lot of your time bruce and the reason for my call is i help on non-legal side of probate and you probably have somebody helping you already with the house um which house um are you executor of the probate uh yeah mm -hmm. yeah so do, do you have a property to take care of yeah which one Oh, you have uh, uh, multiple properties in probate? Uh, they're not all in probate, but yeah, um, there's a couple of couple of houses. Yeah, well, I, I probably only heard of only one, which is on probate, but we can talk about either. Um, what do you prefer to talk about? Uh, it depends. What are you, uh, what are you, what are you offering? Yeah. Are you looking to buy or what, what? What what are you what are you offering? Yeah, I I help on uh, with probate process. So especially uh, essentially, I'm a probate specialist, mm -hmm. and I'm helping with uh, uh with the non legal side of probate, organizing things, um, helping you to figure out what's the plan. Uh, who is currently helping you with the probate house? Our attorney. Mm -hmm. Okay. How how um. How comfortable are you being an executor role? Um, yeah, uh, it, it, fine. We're we're. Uh, I've done it before, so um, it's not too overwhelming at this point. And our attorney is doing almost everything for us as well. Sounds good. Yeah, well, it's a difficult time for you right now, and you know this the situation you're in. It's probably involves a lot of stress and maybe anxiety and maybe some of the, um, just the hard, hard time, um, you know, to, to think about anything else. So what, what are you going through right now? What, what are you thinking about your next step? Um, getting the family on the same page with what we're going to do with the houses is probably the next step. So your family needs to make a decision. You need to make a decision together about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what what are you what are you thinking like going to be an outcome of it? What do you expect? Um, we'll probably end up selling a couple of them. Um, I've got some cousins that might get a few of the house, a few of the properties, um, and then we'll 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 sell some. So we're we're just kind of all deciding. There's there's a handful of us involved. So um, some cousins and siblings, and my mom's still alive. Um, so we're going to have a family meeting sometime in the next month or so and kind of figure out what, what route we're taking. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you really have a 
a good family because you making all the decisions together i i admire that and uh, i'm yeah. thinking yeah so i'm thinking uh, what can i take off your plate um regarding preparing the property for for sale uh nothing right now i think we're in good shape so um you're thinking like you're pretty pretty much ready to list it um, maybe I, I just, I, I, there's things to do, but we, we've done it before and our attorneys got several people, um, that are already stepping in to help. So I don't, I I'm just saying, I don't need anything right now. Okay. So you're pretty much, you know, your plan and you know, like what mm -hmm. your next step is and yep. you have an attorney here. Um, yep. you're pretty much ready to list it. Um, yeah, let me ask you a question. Are you um are you like an investor or are you you just sort of a service provider? What I I'm not a hundred percent sure exactly what you um personally do. What what's the call about? Yeah, well, uh, thank you. That's a very good question. Probably this is what we need to uh, clarify first. So I help with the non-legal side of probate. I can help you clean the house to prepare it, uh maybe with something with moving. Um, help with moving, helping to, you know, cut the grass there, um, you know, make sure that the, the property is in a good condition before you sell it. How much of that help do, do you have right now? It's all covered. It's all covered. Okay. So what do you think would be the most challenging for you then in this process? Mm, nothing right now. Okay, you sounds like you cannot think of anything, and uh, so, okay, so if if you if you think like this is nothing um, that will be challenging, what what is your timeline to to sell the property? What do you think of? Um, I I I have no idea. So, like I said a little bit ago, we're probably going to talk as a family and figure that out. Um. Uh. And and if you don't mind, I I gotta I gotta button it up. I've got some calls I need to make that I told I'm a little bit late for. Um, sure. You, you so, uh, yeah, and, and I'm I'm just gonna say um, one more time. Hey, I appreciate what you're doing. Um, we've got everything covered. I I still don't fully understand. You're you're not an investor, or a realtor, or anything, are you? No, I'm not. You're not. Okay. All right. Um. Well. So what I, I, you can send me some information. If you want to send me something in the mail, um, I'll look it over. If there's something I need, I can give you a call. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that, that makes perfect sense. And Bruce, I, I will be happy to do that. And uh, before I go, um, sounds like you have an important conversation with your family coming up. Um, when that happens, what is the best time to reconnect? I don't think we're going to need anything. Okay, well, if I send you an information, maybe you, you can discuss it with your family. Sure. So, yeah. So, what what is the uh, best email to send it the information to you? I uh, drop it in the mail. Um, I, I live at 123 Main Street. All you right. Sounds, address? sounds good. Okay, well, um, thank you very much for the conversation. And um, uh, sounds like you, you're having a, a family conversation uh, coming soon. Uh, do, do you mind if I connect with you after a couple of weeks? No, I will call you. All right. Well, thank you so much, Bruce. All right. Take thank care. you. Okay. Take care. Bye. All right. Cool. Sorry for being so, so like direct and uh, really, really assertive. I feel like some of those times where I was like that, I might have, if I was a real prospect, I might have hung up. So instead of hanging up, I was kind of saying what I feel like um, I feel like they would have been thinking. Not many prospects are going to say what they're thinking, but they're thinking some of the things that I asked you and said to you. So um, put yourself inside of their head um, and say, OK, if I'm getting these questions, um, what are they going to be? What are they going to be thinking and wondering that maybe they're just not asking? Um, so let me clarify real quick. Vladimir, do you want to buy houses? Like your personal business, how do you make money? Pro probably services. Services. Okay. So you, you're you not 
interested in listing or purchasing real estate? Uh, wholesale. Wholesale. Okay. So that is, is that how you make your income or you make your, your most of your income just through services? Services. Okay. Got it. Cool. I like it. Um, very different from what other people are. Um, so I think that that's your strategic advantage. I think you need to put that into your call. Um, hey, listen, could I take a fast second and tell you um, what I do and why it might be different from anything that anyone else is doing? Yes. Um, so I'm not a realtor. I'm not an investor. I'm sure you're getting a lot of calls from them. I legitimately just provide services and resources to families that are going through um, the probate process, specifically around properties. So if you have to rekey a property, if you have to clean it out, winterize it, cut the grass, handle moving, anything like that, those are the things I help with. Um, can I ask you a question? Is there any of that that you guys are kind of needing some resources around or do you have that handled? Okay. Um, so if you're, if you're not um, trying to make your living from investing, if, if wholesaling is just something that you can do on the side and you're like, hey, great, I found a wholesale, but I'm but I'm making my money on services, differentiate yourself from everyone else. If, if I'm going through probate and you say, hey, I'm not a realtor, I'm not an investor, immediately you're going to drop my guard a little bit. All of the rest of us on this call, including me, um, they have their guards up against us. So take their guard away. I was guarded because I didn't know that you didn't, you weren't a realtor. Okay. So I was guarded. Um, so take that away by, uh, by, by making sure that it's really crystal clear that you're not here to try to uh, buy or, or list a, a property for them, that you're just providing resources. How much does that cost? A lot of it really depends. Um, uh, it depends on what you need, depends on, um, it depends on, on a lot of things. A lot of times, some of the services I provide are completely free. Um, and, and the next thing, the other thing that I'm going to mention is I don't want you to keep going back to the follow-up. I gave you a boundary. Now I'm not comfortable with you following up. I'll call you. That's a strong boundary. Don't, don't go to that boundary repetitively. So here are the boundary. And then I want you to recognize that it's always better to ask for forgiveness than ask for permission. I don't like asking people if I can follow up with them at a particular time. All right. I'm going to follow up with them at a particular time. They just don't need to know it. All right. I want them thinking that they have all the power as to when we're going to communicate. So uh, leave them feeling like it's it's in their court as to whether we talk again. And then you make sure to call back. Go for it. Thank you, Bruce. That was wonderful advice. I felt during the conversation, like in the middle, you warmed up to me and you started to give me more information. All of a sudden, I, I felt like a cold you know, blow of wind. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering what caused that. Um, and some people are just going to be that way. Uh, what so caused what, that? What, um, what happened on now call? Like what, what, what made you feel like you've been guarded again? Oh, why? Um, uh, be, because of a lack of um, uh, clarity. That's why I put the guard back up. Um, it was kind of I played the character of someone who was skeptical first. So I was skeptical first. Then I went, hey, you know what? It, before I go any further there, let me let me say this. Um, half of the jerks that we talk to on the phone that are mean and rude and abrasive, that's not who they are, really. They're they're not that way. If you call me, a cold call me, and I am mean, rude, and abrasive, it's not because I'm mean, rude, and abrasive. I'm playing a character, and I know that that character gets people off of the phone. But because I don't have, I it's not who I really am. If you can get through that 30 to 60 seconds of me being mean, um, I'll go back into my real 
nature, which is conversational and friendly. Okay, so when someone is re is mean, um, a lot of times they're just playing a role because they know that it's probably going to get rid of you. And then all of a sudden they get nice. And it's not always because you did something magical. It's because they don't have any more of that character <laughs> to play. They're, they're just, they, they took their shot of being mean and getting rid of you and it didn't work. And you're still on the phone. So gosh, I'm, I'm just going to go back to being my nice, friendly self. However, uh, people do run out of patience. Even the nicest people run out of patience. Um, I'll never forget one day I was selling cars. I was 20 years old. I was selling cars in Charlotte, North Carolina. And we went out on a test drive. And I'm just a complete novice, new at the in that industry. And I forgot to check the gas tank to make sure that we had fuel. And we got about four miles away from the dealership and the car ran out of gas. And I was so embarrassed and I was so apologetic. And this was in 2000, about 2000. Um, and I didn't have a cell phone. Okay. And it was, it was, it was awful trying to get fuel and I was apologizing and the couple kept saying, don't worry about it. It happens. You're okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, and they were so nice and understanding and I was being apologetic and I usually revert to sarcasm when I'm really uncomfortable. I'll start getting sarcastic and we were joking around and we were having friendly banter for 30 minutes while we waited on the gas to show up. And all of a sudden the lady goes, I, I said, I said a joke and she goes, um, I wish you wouldn't take things so lightly and would realize how much of a jerk you seem like right now. And she just turned on me. <laughs> and the reason is she ran out of patience. She ran out of patience. So that's what happened with me at the end. I ran out of patience and why I had no clue what you did. I'd given you a couple of opportunities to kind of explain um, what you did, why you did it. And I didn't, I wasn't really getting anywhere with that. And I ran out of patience, at least the character that I, I gave you ran out of patience. So somewhere in that, somewhere in your conversation, um, before it gets too late, I want you to say something like, Hey, you know, I know my calls out of the blue. Do you mind if I take a fast minute and, and kind of explain precisely what I do and why I do it? Yes. Now you can go into detail. I don't want you to go into detail for five minutes, but you can go into detail. I'm not a realtor. I'm not an investor. I'm here to help um, navigate probate from a services standpoint. And I don't know if you need any of these, but I can help take care of anything from a property clean out to preservation, winterizing, cleaning gutters, arranging moving, coordinating estate sales, anything like that. And then say, there's about a million other things that I do, but I'm not going to bore you with the details. Just think of me like a resource provider. Okay, and then I move to a question. Do you guys have all that handled at this point? And once they say, yeah, it's handled, it's handled, it's handled, and I get the idea that they're just going to keep giving me the same answer, I'm going to fall back to, hey, listen, totally understand. I'm going to let you go before I do. Let me send you some information in the mail. I want you to look it over. Keep it as you go through probate. Give me a call if there's anything that you need. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll pop it in the mail in the next day or two. It should arrive. It'll come in a package. Please save it and call me if something comes up. Is it cool? Okay, good. Listen, I'll, I really appreciate the time. I'll let you go. <clears throat> so I want to make sure that they know I'm sending them information and that they know that they should save that information and call me. Now, I didn't say anything about me calling them. Why? I don't want them to say, no, don't call me. If I say, can I call you in a couple of weeks? No, don't call me. I'll call you. Now, if you do call me, I'm probably not going to be very friendly. Didn't I tell you not to call me that I'd call you? So um, that's why I don't ask if I can follow up at a particular time. It's always, I'll send you information, save it. You call me if you need anything. And again, I'm going to repeat, 
Vladimir, you need to follow up with them. You need to call them. Just don't tell them that you're going to do it. Best case scenario, they say, okay. And then they save your phone number and say, don't answer this guy's call. <laughs> okay. It's not the best case. Best case is they answer your call. But most of the time they're going to say, hey, I'm going to block this number. I'm going to save it as someone not to answer. If you go through my phone, there's at least five or six people's names in here that their last name, I've got their first name. It might be Vladimir. And the last name is do not answer. <laughs> okay. Or Vladimir, annoying salesperson. And I know when it pops up, I'm not picking that call up. I've saved it as some someone that I'm not going to answer. So I don't I don't want that. And that's why I don't tell them that I'm going to call them back. Bruce, may I ask you a final question, please? Sure. Yeah. So in the beginning, you you asked me like which property? And it appears that I covered that there are multiple properties there. So my question to you is, let's say they don't worry about being executor. They, they have everything taken care of. At this point, does it make, I mean, would it make sense from your perspective to open up another conversation and say, well, that sounds like it's handled. What, what about the other property? What, what do you plan for that? Um, well, the thing is, when you are talking about properties and what their plans are, I think that you're um, confusing them as to what you're really calling about. So if you're not there to try to buy the property or put a contract on it, and I know that you can and you will and you're you're happy to wholesale, um, but if that's not what is the, if that's not the main point of your service, um, I I may bring it up. Go ahead. Yeah, my question is like, it, it's not like what I asked them, but more of if that is would that make sense to open up a conversation about another property or you wouldn't do that? I'm generally going to blanket the services. So I'm going to say, essentially, I go to real estate, any real estate involved. And I coordinate moving, clean outs, estate sales, um, arrange for inventories of assets, I do yard maintenance, any maintenance around properties as well. And then I say, um, is that handled? And are there any properties that you need those on? So I'm not necessarily, I'm not going to get, no, we don't need anything. And then go, what about 123 Main Street? No, we don't need anything. What about 456 Oak Street? No, we don't need anything. What about 789 Bell Street? Okay. So when I sort of present the service, I'm presenting it for the package of properties. Makes sense. Um, yeah, yeah, that's very wise. Yeah. Um, and then, and then let them kind of tell me, yeah, I don't need it over here, but I knew, do need it over there. All right, cool. Good. All right. Great call, man. Great call. Um, be a little bit more clear on what you are and you are not. And if you differentiate yourself as not a realtor, not an investor, you're going to drop a lot of walls that they're putting up for the rest of us. So cool. All right. Okay, guys. Awesome. Um, appreciate uh, Sarah. Go ahead real quick. I got three minutes. Okay. It'll be really quick. So one thing I wanted to say about his call is that I really appreciated how persistent he was. And I felt like if we could just just tweak that and refine it just a little bit and get clearer on your value proposition that you're even calling about it your persistence was refreshing mm -hmm. um if that makes sense and uh i really wanted i was hoping you were a realtor cuz they kept bruce kept opening it up and being like you know we don't know we don't know we need to have the family conversation and i was like offer the value <laughs> yeah. um but you're not a realtor, so it didn't work. <laughs> but I, I appreciated your persistence. Thank you. Yep. Appreciate awesome. That. Good. Great, great comment. Absolutely. Okay, guys. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here. We'll be back for role play in two weeks on Wednesday. Um, check your emails and make sure that you um, that you save it Wednesday. Uh, every, uh, every other Wednesday at um, 1230 Eastern time, 930 Pacific. 
Um, it's December 23rd if you're listening after the fact. So we're not going to do one on the 30th. We'll do one uh, the next Wednesday and then it's every other Wednesday. So cool. Um, thank you guys so much for being here and I'll see you next time. Bye.